Hello folks, Phil Gallagher of Thraven, you here for another modern video. Today we're going to be playing with Peter K's, technically this is a Jeskai control deck. Uh, so what do I mean by that? Um, if you look at all the mana pips here, you can see that this is a blue-white control deck, and most of the mana base is the mana base for a traditional blue-white control deck. However, with Prismatic Ending, you really do want to have the flexibility to go up to three mana. Um, you know, there's some critical cards, like say, I don't know, like a Teferi that you might want to take out at three mana. And so we have one Triome and one Steam Vents as fetchable red sources solely for Prismatic Ending. Well, okay, maybe solely isn't quite fair because we do have a couple of wear tears in, in the sideboard. Uh, but we are basically a, a blue-white control deck in game one and most of the game twos. So blue-white control decks, or frequently Jeskai control decks of this nature, have existed for a long time in modern. But this looks really different from the blue-white control decks I played when, say, like a Sphinx's Revelation was something that was really common in this deck. These days, Archmage's Charm is really popular as a draw to that can also steal something like a Ragavan. Uh, it's also just a counter spell. Uh, so this is a very, very powerful and flexible spell. And now there are some bigger Planeswalkers that are finishers in this deck. You've got Jace the Mind Sculptor and Big Teferi. Uh, in case you're, you know, one of my primarily legacy watchers, the plus is draw a card, untap two lands at your end step. Uh, the minus three is put a non-land permanent into its owner's library third from the top and the negative eight is you gain an emblem with whenever you draw a card exile target permanent and opponent controls and all i'm saying is that if you have that emblem and then you jace brainstorm it feels real real dirty so we have path to exile and prismatic ending to get us through the early game against the the aggro decks you know your your death shadows your burns and things like that and that's our hope that between Counterspells, Archmage's Charms, and the Snapcaster Mages to flash them back, that we can go and make it to the end game when powerful cards like Cryptic Command, Supreme Verdict, and the Archmage, Archmage's Charms will bury our opponents. Uh, if you take a look here, there aren't really that many win conditions. A lot of times we're looking to kill with uh, Hall of the Storm Giants, which for six mana becomes a 7-7 seven, seven blue giant creature with Ward 3. Uh, like, that's that's one of the ways that we're going to look at killing people. Uh, and a lot of times we'll probably win via a concession rather than actually physically killing our opponent. Uh, for the legacy players, something that might look a little weird is spreading seas. Uh, but remember, sort of like uh, with a Blood Moon effect, this is going to kill Urza's Saga. Uh, and that card's real good. Our sideboard features a lot of traditional blue-white control cards. I'm just going to highlight two that my legacy fans might not know. Blossoming Calm. You gain Hexproof until your next turn, and you gain two life. It has rebound, so you get to do it again. And then Aether Gust. Uh, choose target spell or permanent that's red or green. Its owner puts it on the top or bottom of their library. Um, so I'm excited to, to play this one. I, I really do enjoy these like draw-go sorts of control decks. Um, we'll see how long this league ends up being. Modern leagues are fast, but this is not a deck that is going to close the game quickly, uh, so I'm not sure where that's going to leave us overall. Anyway, if you're a new viewer, please consider subscribing for Legacy Modern and Vintage content five days a week. If you're a regular, throw me a like. That's the easiest way to support my content for free. If you want to try out this deck list later or get one of your own videos on the stream, that information is available in the video description. All right, let's battle. Okay, so my opponent has revealed a Kahira, which means I might be playing against that Elementals deck. Uh, this is a one-lander. I don't think that cuts it with this deck. I, I think I need more than that. Three lands. That's more acceptable. I'll keep this and probably pitch the Cryptic Command. Need to work on getting myself through the early game first. So if we are playing against a deck that is full of creatures, I want to be able to answer like the Risen Reefs and such. All right, let's grab that Triome. That would always enter tapped. Okay, and I'll play a Misty. At some point, I'm going to need to fetch a Hollowed Fountain. It doesn't need to be immediately. Like I have one white source already, but I'll do, I will want a second white at some point. I'll hold up Counterspell, uh, which I can just get off an island. Um, and if my opponent doesn't play anything, I will just... Uh, Grab a tapped land here. I need to mute my phone real quick. One sec. Okay. 
Um, yeah, I think I'm just going to continue to hold up Counterspell. If I knew the game was going to go this slowly and my opponent wasn't going to, like, make any opening turn plays, I would have kept the Cryptic Command. Oh. The fuck is going on over there? I am quite confused. Let's not grab the Steam Vents. I already have double white. This gives me double red, which I guess is technically a thing. Do I, do I spreading seize and knock them off a of color? Still have counter spell available. Sure. Yeah, th this is a time where I, I need more format knowledge to know what the correct play is. We're pretty damn far away from assembling Tron. Knock them off green. Okay. I mean, there's a win condition. That's cool. Pretty far away from Tron, you say. My opponent is also just like not putting this companion into their hand, uh, which is slightly confusing for me. Or to me, rather. Yeah, uh, maybe they just straight up forgot about that companion. All right, so I will draw two cards. All right, like, I don't think I'm supposed to just tap out for this Teferi. Well, maybe my opponent doesn't play counter spells. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on over there. But, like, if they are a Tron deck that is, like, legit playing actual factual counterspell, it's quite bad to do this. If they're not, I just get to untap two lands. Okay, let's let's go. Oh, show me what you're working with. All right, so I get a card. And I untap two lands. Okay. Sure. That's... Okay, that mana plus Shark Typhoon is an interesting interaction. I think I'll let them untap, and then I'll... Well, do I care? I guess I can just let the Teferi take a hit. I'd rather hold up Counterspell. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. And then end of turn. I'll attempt to remove this. And my opponent does have more basics. I don't think I'm going to worry about untapping the lands here. I think I'm just going to hold up a bajillion D mana. Ooh, a Cryptic. Nice. Uh, so I can fetch a Hollowed Fountain here and then untap that, though. That seems fine. All right, they're untapped. I don't care about the mana. Another shark typhoon. Do. Okay. I'll 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 just snapcaster this. They left one blue up. Dark mage's charm. I only have one counter spell up anyway. Yeah, fuck it. Let's arc mage's charm that. That is my shark. I also think my opponent should have stacked that differently. They are now dismembering their own shark. Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm good with that. There's a lot of mana, whatever this is going to be. Oh, false alarm. Um, uh, doesn't really matter that much. I have one, two, three, four, five counter spells available. I don't think that matters. I can also just, like, deal with it via Teferi at some point. All right. Plus this. Uh, there's a punish for playing my land first, I guess. All right, opponent's down to twelve. I mean, I have two floating mana and a billion counter spells. I guess I'll fire that off. I'll counter this. Oh. I mean, I'll still counter it, but my opponent gets some amount of value. I want to counter draw. I kind of just want to put the Snapcaster in Mage and clock my opponent faster. Now that they're going to gain some life, I think I'm just going to go ahead and Snapcaster counter spell this. All right, my Hydroid Crisis. Now my opponent gains some life. Sure. I still have two counter spells available. I think it's probably fine to draw cards here. Okay. Um, here's here's something that can close the game very very quickly. Um, although I think I'll Field of Ruin my opponent's Urza's Power Plant this turn in all likelihood. Yeah. All right. Send in for four. Put my opponent to ten. Blow up the power plant that they just have one of. Grab a land. Oh, they also have more lands. Slightly unexpected. Not problematic. What's the minus on this? Six? Eight. Um, I guess. Counter draw? I, I'm still, like, kind of eyeing this chalice, but I'll counter draw. Counter it again? I guess. Oh, there's still more. Their spreading seas is fine. Okay. Okay, Prismatic Ending can answer the Chalice, which is quite good. 
probably do that and end up playing the Hall of the Storm Giants this turn. Yep. What matters? Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. All right, so let's Prismatic Ending the Chalice, and I'll cast that for two so that the Chalice itself doesn't get countered. And I'll send in with these. Untap some lands. And I've got some ops as redraws at the end of my opponent's turn. I also just have a counter spell available and a removal spell. Okay. I mean, that's a nuisance, but it is what it is. Actually, hold on. <laughs> I would like to cast my Hydra Crest for a billion mana, and my opponent starts thinking, and that's the point where you're like, no, okay, you know what? I'm done. I get I, I would just get to Arc Arc Mage's charm that. Wait, no, it has CMC in play. Yeah, so, okay, so I would have I would have countered that. Uh what do we have for this matchup? Honestly, the game one deck felt pretty good against it. A big dumb Eldrazi hits play or something. That's the sort of thing I could care about. Otherwise I don't know if I'm actually sideboarding. There's not like extra land destruction out of the sideboard or anything. No blood moons. I don't know that the mystical disputes will be good as the games go really long like I probably want them to. I could EE for an extra out to a Chalice that gets in play, or Sharks, I think I like that. I don't hate Doven's Veto, and I could just board in Olamog as another finisher. Because the game legitimately might just go that long. I don't know that I need Supreme Verdicts based on what I saw. Like, Prismatic Endings and Path to Exiles answer Hydroid Crosses just fine. I might, I, I might want one. Maybe, maybe this Olamog is too cute and I don't actually need that. I do think the game will go that long in a lot of cases, though. Now let's do it. Um, so this is a hand that has two redraws towards hitting the next land, but I don't get to use my mana on turn one to do that. I think I'm going to mull this and just try to find something that has better starting mana. Yeah, like this. This is, this is fine. I'll get a Trium on turn one. And then probably hold up Counterspell. Spreading Seas are a little weird here, in that, like, they definitely have a use at, at keeping my opponent off of Tron, but, like, my opponent's not really trying to get Tron. It's kind of like a, eh, if it happens, it's cool. But yeah, you can you can have your EE for two. Like, that that trades with the Snapcaster Mage at some point. Um, How early do I need Counterspell up? I'd almost rather just Cantrip here and, like, be better at hitting land drops. Take my opponent off of green. Uh, I'd red crass this color. Okay. Okay, this is a problem. Now I miss a land drop and I start to fall behind. So if my opponent just goes land go, they're increasingly more favored. Shit. Yep. Fuck, okay. I guess so as to not discard, I do this. Uh, but life life's bad since I missed that land drop. Okay, you can you can put it in your graveyard instead of exile. I'm I'm good with that. Oh, I guess that also gives them their green mana back. They they did actually have a use to do that. Okay, all right. The good news is I have hit another land drop. The bad news is I don't actually have anything like an Archmage's Charm to cast and actually make good use of my mana unless my opponent casts spells. Yeah, I feel like my opponent is favored in the current staring contest. Well. So as to not discard, I will EE for zero and, like, have that hang out as a way to kill my opponent's EE. I'm not sure if I'll crack it and just kill this immediately, or if I want this to hang out and just be an answer to a future chalice or shark. I think I just want to hang out. Alright, I will opt. That is not a land, so it goes to the bottom. Thank you. And next turn, I suppose I probably end up going for a Jace. Not the best in the face of a Shark Typhoon. Maybe I would Jace and immediately plus. That would keep that would keep my lot my Jace alive at five loyalty. Even if my opponent makes a land drop, they can only make a four four Shark. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. I do not care about counterspelling this card right now. But I'm in danger of discarding. I think I'm just going to counter this as a way to potentially keep my opponent from making a land drop this turn. All right, success on that front. This is going to enter tapped. Good with that. 
we're just, we're just going to tap out for Big Daddy Jace here. All right, so the next question is, am I just going to try to aggressively Fate Seal? Or am I brainstorming? Like, how do I want to play this? I think I'm just going to brainstorm. I'm not going to think too much about this here. I'm just going to put two cards back. As of right now, it's my plan to win via Teferi. Yeah, sure, that's fine. One, two, three, four, five. Brainstorm. Okay, these cards are great. I'll put back one path to exile. I don't th think I need the second cryptic command immediately. Go land. Batch. I think this is worth shocking for. I go to fairy. Um, go ahead and plus this. Okay, my, my opponent is, is done with me. So the rest of the turn cycle was going to be path to exile this creature. Untap two lands, have Dovin's Veto available. Um, just uh, pointing this out, looking at the clock disparity here, um, this deck is slow to pilot, though powerful. Um, so keep that in mind if you are going to be playing in paper events where the clock matters a little bit more. Okay, um, this hand looks totally fine. I will keep this. This is probably just going to be a tapped Hollowed Fountain on turn one. Or sorry, a tapped Rainbow Jeskai Triome thing that I don't actually know the name of. Dragon Rage Channeler is fine. I'll have to think about whether or not I want to remove that immediately or whether or not I want to hold up Counterspell. Kind of interesting because of the Supreme Verdict that's in my hand. Bagarin? Raugrin? Raugrin Triome? All right. I think I let them have this for a turn. They might get a couple of scries and build up the graveyard a bit, but I think I want to have Counterspell available both this turn and the next turn, and then I can Prismatic Ending this the following turn. I also may set myself up for a sweet Supreme Verdict if I'm willing to take a little bit of damage. That one here is totally fine. Cool. Let's go Planes and attempt Prismatic Ending. All right, we have gotten a response. All right, and a Shock. You going to Counterspell me? I'll let my opponent surveil, and then I think I Counterspell back. I probably have the better end game than my opponent, and I want to make sure that I make it to said end game. Okay. We're not quite to, like, I'm afraid of Merktite region yet. My opponent's not, like, next turn they could probably do that. Um, I have a Supreme Verdict to answer that, though, if I can't get it with a counter spell. Sure. Well, I'll take two, and my opponent gets a treasure. I don't care about them, uh... Taking a Spreading Seas out of my deck, I don't actually want to draw that card anyway. Oh. I play Jason plus. But I think I'd rather just Counterspell the Ragavan this turn. Yeah, let's, let's just plan on doing that. But like, Unholy Heat is kind of a spooky card. Alright, so Field of Ruin destroys it. Then search for a basic land. I can muck with one of their lands and also cast my Counterspell. While sort of fixing my mana. Uh, maybe I don't want to do that though, because I could open up like a force of negation. Yeah, I'll just ca I'll just cast the counter spell. Okay, so we might we might see like a Merktide Regent here, in which case I answer that via Supreme Verdict. I could also be cheeky and just Jace bounce it, but then I open myself up to a non delirium to unholy heat. Okay. Yeah, let's let's just go ahead and answer this one for one. And then try to play my Jace on an emptier board when my opponent is slightly more resource light. I, I, I don't think I want to risk just like immediately losing this to Unholy Heat. Yeah, sure. Let's, let's Jace. My opponent has the counterspell, they have the counterspell. But if they don't, I probably pull pretty far ahead. Yeah, they do. And uh, let's just convert one of their lands into another land. This Spreading Seas is not super useful for me here. Just trying to redraw. Uh, now I am out of gas. That's a bad place to be for the control deck. I need to top deck something pretty big here before my opponent just like plays a Merchide Regent and I have nothing to deal with it. Or does this activate? Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, I, I guess we just try to kill my opponent. This is a little unorthodox for me, but I guess this is just where we're at. I also has Ward 3. 
Okay. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, we take those. Uh, so the, the game one deck feels pretty good here. Uh, again, I don't think I'm going to sideboard much of anything. I can sideboard Mystical Dispute as a, you know, a mana leak to help me in counterspell situations. I don't want Spreading Seas in my deck. Uh, so I need to board in at least three cards. Like, I could I could look to Rest in Peace as something to stop Merktred Regents, but I think my own Snapcaster Mages are more important. And so I'm looking at, like, Aether Gust, EE, and Mystical Dispute. EE is another thing that just answers a dashed Ragavan. Like, I've got Mystical... I, I guess Dovin's Veto is also reasonable. Yeah, I do a, do a split, kind of take one of everything here. I also think I could probably shave Opt. I want more Mystical Disputes. I'm, not, I'm, I'm just not sure if I do. I don't, I don't super respect Opt, but I, I am only running 24 lands. Let's, let's try going pretty dense and just keep a hand that has a reasonable number of lands. Possible, like, the Opt is better than either the third Mystical Dispute or a Dovin's Veto. Again, this is why, like, if, you, if you're going to play a deck seriously, like, you, you, you put in the time to figure out how your in-out numbers work and what you want to be doing in each matchup. You know, I'm, I'm always kind of figuring out live with 90% of the decks that I'm playing. Yeah, this is, this is a four-land hand. Uh, accordingly, I will be keeping this. If my opponent has, like, a turn one threat. I'm more scared of a Ragavan than anything else. Okay, yeah. I will probably take a hit from that. Rather than path it on turn one. Uh, maybe not now, though. Because now I want to play Counterspell on turn two. That would involve shocking myself on both turn one and turn two, though. That's a little awkward. I think I'm good with that. So now the next question is, when do I want to bat the Exile? I can give my opponent a mana, or I can give them a chance to have, like, a, a Spell Pierce effect or something else that would let them scry. Or not scry, but you know now actually now also plays into force of negation go later will it work it will work okay now i kind of want to play a just naked snapcaster mage and try to block this and do that off island and if it doesn't work then i'll arc mage's charm and take this okay so like there, there's unholy heats and lightning bolts and such that can stop this it looks like my trade is successful. I don't think it's worth waiting a turn to try to path the exile. I, I don't want to be giving my opponent value. Okay. Well, Guide Lantern is an interesting board in. Is my opponent randomly playing Urza Saga too? Hmm. Okay. Do I want to take their Dragon Rage Channeler? Kind of do. Yeah, I think I'm going to take a hit from it though. I'm going to shock myself again. If I end up not taking this, I can counterspell and opt. I do not know... I don't think that if I take this, I get to keep it. Uh, let's counterspell and opt this turn then. Okay, that worked. I'm just taking one. That's where I want to be. Land? I don't think I want land. I'm good with that card. I can't really have double counterspell available this turn, so I'm just going to play this land tapped. And I'll kind of do the same thing I did last turn, where I'll plan on taking the Dragon Rage Channeler at the end step. Ooh. Is this the point where I want to take this? No, I still need to worry about a Merktide Regent happening. Yeah, I, I just need to have a counterspell available during my opponent's turn. I, I can't get Merktided here. And then I'll attempt to take this at the end step. I'll go to 14. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, please don't mark tide with counterspell backup. Didn't have the opportunity to play around that. I mean, so I try. Uh, but I do not expect this one to work. Mm -hmm. Darn you, tapped land. All right, 
this is now scary. This a uh, draw two with Archmage's Charm situation. Probably. Try to hit one of my remaining three paths and answer this immediately. I don't think I'm going to play this around Spell Pierce. I want to keep my options most flexible. Yeah. Well, that's bad. I'm going to eat six to the dome here. Or rather, I'm going to hit and take nine to the dome. I could really use a Supreme Verdict. Yup. I'll let that happen. That's that's not worth a counterspell at this stage of the game. I need I need this to protect whatever is going to kill Merktide Regent. Okay. All right. I am in danger. Uh, I have to draw something here or I'm dead. Um, this is technically a redraw. I need to play this land first. For spell pierce based reasons. Ah! Oh, that stings. That stings. Okay, so I can play an EE for one. Kill this, take five, go to one. And I don't want to crack this now. I want to wait to crack this because of dash Ragavan. I will die to a, a burn spell that goes to my face. I believe Unholy Heat uh, cannot hit me directly, though, so that's the good news. Okay, another Soul Guide Lantern. Um, so they are they are really about keeping me from Snapcaster Maging. For sure. Okay. So I'll pop my EE and kill that. And I, I go to 1, so I could just die to a Lightning Bolt right here. Okay, not a Lightning Bolt. That's That's something that feeds into my Supreme Verdict. That's good news for me. I can go... One, two, three, four, and Supreme Verdict. And okay, so I can't Verdict and Dovin's Veto in this turn cycle, unfortunately. I do not have triple white, I only have double white. Alright, so be it. Alright, so I have three mana available, but my counter spell doesn't work. You know, pa pants are down here. What do you got, S Guts? Ash creature, lightning bolt. Honestly, any creature that sits in play is probably going to be good enough. Okay. That's a Snapcaster Expressive Iteration. That doesn't kill me immediately. It does mean that I have to draw an out to it. Do I want to scry in my upkeep? Not sure that I do. This is 4 plus activate, so that would be like 1, 2, 3, 4. That would leave me with 2 mana. 3 once I make my land drop. All right. I'll do it. Okay, path is fine for this turn. All right. So again, it's the game of when do I want to cast this? I think now, while I can't hard cast a force of negation, I'll, I'll give them that mana. I, I don't think mana is the bottleneck right now. I say no to your no. This is a slog. I think I'm on the wrong side of this currently. There's, there's just too many things that kill me, and my opponent has a good number of cantrips. This, as soon as I miss... Okay, Ragavan kills me. That's, that's just a dash, and I die. Whew. G-G. Uh, so we're gonna, we're gonna do that again. I'm pretty happy with how most of these cards look. Um, again, like, I can think about Opt, I can think about um, Aether Gust. The counter spells were feeling pretty good. Yeah, this is fine. I will keep this. I think I'm just going to play Hollowed Fountain tapped on one. And I can get rid of this stop. Yeah, I don't think I want to shock to potentially remove something on turn one. Okay. Um, I, I will path to exile this immediately, I think. Because my opponent showed me Spell Pierce last game, and I don't want to open that up as an out to this. Yep, that's fine. I think if I make it to my opponent's turn with, with the Archmage's Charm up, I'm in really good shape. Okay, fantastic. And I'll have a Counterspell available, and I'll have Snapcaster Path available. And then shortly after that, Snapcaster Archmage's Charm. Yeah, that's, that's fine. It's good, but it's not the end of the world. Okay, do I just take it? I would take it in combat anyway. I think I'm just going to take that right now. It's Ragavan's world, and we're just living in it. Gotta respect that. 
and this might make my opponent burn like an unholy heat or something like that that would later protect one of my planeswalkers. Yep. Exhibit A. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So now we're getting to the point of the game where I get to just make like land drops and play Drago. Um Snapcaster Path doesn't play around Pierce. I don't have mana for this. I think I'm just gonna go Steam Vents apt and pass the turn. Yeah, fetch away. I kind of feel like my opponent has some number of counter spells in hand. Oh. So this feels like Force of Negation. I, I guess I'll move the end step and do it then. We'll make him have it. It also could be like Spell Pierce plus Counter Spell or something. No, okay. My my read was correct. E. Things big. Um, do I want to drop counter spells on my opponent's turn to make it more likely that my draw two resolves so that I can find an answer to this? Maybe? I, I don't know for sure. Let's go with no. Actually, I am going to do it now. I Because I, I kind of got the feeling that my opponent's hand had a decent number of counter spells. And if my opponent's hand does have a decent number of counter spells, I want this to resolve and to play around it to the best of my ability. Yeah, your bobble's fine. I can, like, Cryptic Command, bounce Merktide, draw a card, and buy me a turn that way. Um, that's, that's my current plan, and I can back that up with a Mystical Dispute, which may counter what my opponent is doing. Uh, that's not going to get to that. Let's send these in. I don't actually need that much time, because the Hall of the Storm Giants will be on soon. It's six other ones, right? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. The next turn, I can theoretically attack for 11. Uh, yep. I think that's fine. I think I would rather draw a card of my own rather than counter a Serum Visions. Actually, do I want to tap this down rather than bounce this? My opponent has a bunch of mana. No, I want to bounce it and then try to counter it with Mystical Dispute. I want to bounce it. If it works, on it has Force of Negation and exactly enough mana to play around Mystical Dispute, which is unfortunate. Uh, now, currently, I am ahead in the race if I just attack twice. That's the good news, uh, but a Lightning Bolt would change that. Oh. Uh... Oh, I only have a single white mana, uh, so let's not think too hard about that. I can't cast that. So uh, let's try to try to turn some things sideways, shall we? Put you to two. All right. I I am F sixth. Someone wins in this turn cycle. Oh shit! Is this another Merktide Regent? Oh, it is another Merktide Regent. So that grows the other Merktide Regent via its ability, and means that I am dead. Fuck! Oh, that one was so close. Just so incredibly close. GG's. Wow, that was that was a fun one. Uh, okay, I have an interesting opening hand here. I have four land drops and two things that redraw, but my hand kind of objectively does nothing. However, with like any one counter spell, I all of a sudden have two counter spells. I think I keep this one. Uh, so let's just go Misty Pass. I think I thought well. I would have thought a little harder on the draw. Like, on the play, when I can probably just, like, spreading seize my opponent's first land and take that redraw immediately, I, I think it's totally fine. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we are playing against Mill. Um, if, I, if I make it to the end game where I have a billion counter spells, uh, I think I'm okay, but I'm not particularly good at winning the game quickly. And Mill can naturally get me in that regard. If my life total's not under pressure, I'm just going to shock myself here. Uh, and we will slightly downgrade my opponent's land to take a redraw. Okay, Cryptic is great. So later on, I will have two different Cryptics. That does mean I'm a little weak next turn. I would love to draw a two or three drop. I'll, I'll settle for an opt. Oh, does opponent not have more lands? Ooh, that's good for me. This, on the other hand, is not good for me. Yo, dog. 
I heard you liked islands. So we made your island an island, and then we made your island an island again. Oh, okay, an opt is fine. Shock? Fetch shock even? Probably fetch shock even, just like take more lands out of the deck. We'll do it now. What do we end up with seeing? Okay, that's a reason not to fetch. God, how many of these are there? My opponent's pausing. Ooh, okay, so I just lost both Jace's and the fairy to that. Ooh. Okay. I also lost my second to fairy to that. Okay, uh, it's hard to win now. I don't want another land. Uh, Prismatic Ending is actively good. I can get rid of a crab. I need these crabs out of the way. It's like, I'm down to Snapcaster meets... Snapcaster beats and that one Stormland, whatever it's called. Oh, fuck, there's more of them. Oh, okay. It is, quote-unquote, just a cryptic command. By cryptic command. Um, I don't really think the surgical extractions are very good, by the way. Like, surgical extraction is not something that gets me dead. It might make it a little more difficult for me to win, but it doesn't actually kill me. And killing me is kind of important. All right. Goodbye, crab number one. I will make a land drop. Target a prismatic ending. And I'll go goodbye to crab number two. And then I can actually attack into this one. Okay. Um, what do I have in here? Opt. Probably just opting. I want to do that now. I kind of just want to do that now. I can kind of plan out my turn as best as I can. What the fuck? You're so far ahead right now. All you need to do is draw some lands and cast things like Tasha's, and you're winning this game. I, I, don't, I don't fucking understand that concession. Like, they also know I'm just sitting on a couple of lands. Uh, sure. Hmm. Think we board in the Olamog? We board in the Olamog. Um, the Mystical Disputes are probably quite good. And I can consider EE as something that kills crabs. I'll probably end up playing it. Path to Exile is a slightly awkward way to kill crabs. I don't want Spreading Seas. That's the first thing that's going to go out here. Spring Verdict is also an awkward way to kill crabs. It's very slow. I think a crab when they have multiple crabs is kind of feel bad. Uh, let's, let's junk the Verdicts because they're very slow though. I also just like don't want to kill my Snapcaster Mages. Uh, this hand is underwhelming. I am probably going to keep it. I am hoping to naturally draw some lands. Okay. Uh, so this is going to be a fetch shock situation. We're just going to take the crab before it gets any value. Good stuff. I would like a blue land so the next turn I can play two ops. If I don't play two ops, I might like, have to play like a naked snapcaster or something. I could also play one opt and then hope to, like, hit a blue land so I can play the second. E okay. I, I need more blue mana. Like, look at how many blue pips are in this hand. Um, I'm going to cast Sorcery Speed opt here in case I hit the Triome. That goes on bottom. EE. -E. That's, not, that's not good with Field of Ruin being my next uh, land drop here. Otherwise, I could cast it for one and make good use of my mana. This game may end up coming down to whether or not I end up accidentally losing my Olamog somehow. Or like drawing my Olamog. Shit. Shit. Now we're going to opt and try to hit the land drop again. Stop. Uh, and I think I'll shock here. Again, my life total isn't super relevant. I will play an end of turn Snapcaster Mage as a 2-1. Sure. I am... Glad you don't have a card that's killing me. Like, I understand that like, if my opponent knows that I have some sideboard tech, that they might need to keep those in, but like, I'm not impressed by this right now. I'll, I'll, kill, I'll kill this Ruin Crab with the EE that my opponent knows about on my turn. My opponent is going to get zero cards out of their Ruin Crab. Uh, to confirm, am I good with just putting Ambush Viper into play rather than trying to get one more card out of this? I think so. So I'm just going to cast EE for one, take the crab out of the way, and just get in there. 
I think I need to start pressing my advantage a little bit, because we're both stuck on mana. And I, I want to get to the point where, like, I have a threat in play that's attacking while I have these things up. And if the crab's sitting in play, I don't have that. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Shit. 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 Not great for me. I can hard discard that if I need to. Uh, but my opponent's not doing much to pressure me right now. This probably changes things. Now they can start casting three drops. I'm going to just counter them. Okay, so this is just going to get converted into an island. I'll just, I'll just float my mana here. And my opponent is presumably going to uh, archive trap me once or more. If I activate Field of Ruin, blow this up, then I would drop Counterspell for a split second. So I'm probably not supposed to do that. I'll just opt here. And my opponent will respond with an archive trap. Oh, no, they won't. Uh, no, I don't want a path right now. I said I don't want a path right now. Was, that, was I not clear? thought I was clear. Okay. Um, Crab is fine. I'll answer that with a path. I really thought we were setting up Archive Trap. I guess not, in which case I will fire off a path. If I had passed priority, we would have just gone to my turn. You would have lost the chance to do that. That is so utterly confusing to me. Like, that's the whole reason I did that. Because, uh, okay, wh wh whatever. Alright, send in the Snapcaster Beats. I need to consider going up in the number of cards that I have to be able to discard this Olamog. Okay, sure. Okay, how do I want to play this? I think I just float mana and then cast Archmage's Charm to draw cards and then discard Olamog on my turn. Yeah, I, I think that's my plan. All right, so I am just going to draw two cards right here. Okay, that's fine. I, I can play draw go for a while. This gets a little weird if I draw a land, because like I have this cryptic command. Okay, I don't really care about losing Jace the Mind Sculptor. Again, that doesn't, that doesn't win you the game. That doesn't work towards milling me out. I had no Jaces in hand, so that succeeded in taking one card out of my deck. Okay. So I know they don't have an Archive Trap, or I would have gotten Archive Trapped already. But now my question is, do I play this land... I have four counter spells available. I probably just play the land. I'm just gonna go ahead and fetch now. I think the steam vents. And I'll just attack on in. Put my opponent to nine. I will Archmage's Charm at the end of my opponent's turn. If they don't do anything. I think that's a counter draw here. And this could get drowned in the locked, but I don't have double counter spell available right now, so I'd rather use my expensive counter spell. Yep, okay, that's fine. Okay. Milled 11. That's pretty rough. Now, this Field of Ruin not being a blue-producing land has been biting me in the butt this whole game. I have to decide right now whether I'm going to try to counter my opponent's next three spells and try to kill a Snapcaster, or if I want to try to discard the Olamog. So if I want to try to discard the Olamog, I play Archmage's Charm, I go up to six cards in hand, I draw a card for my turn, that's seven, I draw a card for my turn, and then I can shuffle all this stuff in. Or I can just play towards counterspelling my opponent's stuff. I think I want to play towards counterspelling my opponent's stuff. I think it's going to work a higher percentage of the time. Because if my opponent has, like, yet another Surgical or Extirpate effect and I go for the Olamog line, I probably lose. I don't think I can Scry here. I just do not think that I can afford to drop Counterspell and get this, like, destroyed. Just keep bashing in. Cool, cool. Alright, another turn of no action. Good with that. One, two, three, four, five. So this will be... I'll need one more land, but if I draw a land, then I have lethal next turn. So that's cool. I have double Counterspell available. Um... Uh, no. That's barely worth countering. But I, I am at eight cards in library. Ooh, it's a drown in the lock. Now I probably just have to let that happen so that I don't just die like a Tasha's or something on my opponent's turn. 
I'll replay it. Okay. Land is good for me. Uh, I can't path the exile my own creature. I don't have white. Okay. I was thinking about, like, snapcastering, plowing my own creature for benefit. For my benefit. Uh, do I cast an opt? Sure. Because I, I, I think there's a card that cycles, but it's four cards. So I can draw one for opt, draw one for turn, and then not be dead to the thing that cycles for four cards. Okay. All right, now that four cards remain in deck, do I cast the opt? What are my untapped lands? All right, so I have Field of Ruins. I have multiple. I have multiple Field of Ruins remaining in my four remaining cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, I will cast the opt then. That goes on top. Animate and kill my opponent with two cards remaining. Although I suppose I could have like bad mannersed it and like discarded an Olamog instead this turn. That would have been pretty funny. Uh, but we'll we'll just take the W. Whew. Yeah, that was that was fun. Okay, um, I'll be keeping my hand for uh, this around four now. I've just got an opt in all likelihood on turn one. Into a lot of interactions for creature. If, uh, if we're playing against some sort of combo deck, this hand isn't uh, particularly good. I don't have like the counter spell side of the deck. Um, I will wait to opt on my opponent's turn, though, and I don't think I want to play the Flooded Strand to potentially path on turn one here. If I had a counterspell in hand, I think I would do that, but without a counterspell and, like, the guarantee that I want to be playing things on turn two, this is probably fine. Ooh, a counterspell. I want more lands, but I think I'm good with that draw. Oh, no end of turn fetch. Not really sure what that means. Shaky mana base, maybe? Or, hmm, no? Oh, okay. It's Enchantress, and there's just very few um, actual non-basic lands. Okay, do I want to counterspell this, or Path to Exile this, or Prismatic Ending this? Probably not Prismatic Ending. This can be answered with a path. I should probably answer it with a path. Because I won't be able to answer, uh, like, say, the actual like three-mana Enchantress card, the enchantment version, with this. I don't love ramping the Enchantress player because they uh, frequently have big scary things at the end of the curve, but I believe it is happening. Goodbye, Sithis. We're getting a really good variety of matches this league. Oh, thank you. That uh, that land's super important. So now, like, I have Snapcaster Opt available to start putting pressure on my opponent. I have Archmage's Charm as a counterspell or card draw spell. Yeah, well, that's exactly what it's talking about. Um, let's use the more the less mana efficient one this turn. Take out that. Um, is there any world in which I need this fourth mana this turn? No, probably not. This turn is almost certainly just going to be play counter spell. And the next turn is almost certainly Snapcaster counter spell. Okay. X charge counters on it. Move a charge counter, add a mana. Beginning of your upkeep, it has no charge counters on it, returns to its other hand. Yeah, that's that's fine. So that's that's just like a one mana card. Yeah, that's this is also fine. Do I even path this? I probably path that. Um, but it's not really good. I don't think I use well, maybe I put the Snapcaster in pay, pay, play and start beating. Would mean I have one fewer counter spell though. No, I'm not gonna do it. I'm just gonna path it like this. It feels like my opponent's low on gas, but I don't really need to take chances. Uh, so this will be a counterspell turn. Keep my opponent off of white, white, maybe. More than anything, I'm just taking my redraw here. Nice, 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 nice. I'd rather play Jace on six mana, but I will probably play Jace on four mana on my turn. And to that, I say nope. Okay. That was Mana Bloom, the Blood Moon. Okay, so I don't have white. I thought this was a sideboard card, not a main deck card. So I didn't play around it in game one. Not that big of a deal. I'll just drop the Jace. Do I just, do I just go into Fate Seal mode? Nah, I'll brainstorm. This is one of the cards I specifically wanted to see. All right, I'll make my land drop, call it a turn. Next turn, I can Prismatic Ending away the Blood Moon if I need to. Um, but I am in 
quite good shape with a Planeswalker on board here. Yeah, I, I don't care about Mana Bloom. I think my opponent failed to cast that the way they wanted to. They put it in with zero charge counters, uh, which is a little weird. Ah. Oh, maybe they put it in with one charge counter and then just used it immediately and I didn't see it. I didn't expect them to be able to answer that. In fact, only were able to answer that because I spreading seized their planes, right? Huh. Neat. Okay. Anyway. White, blue, red. By Blood Moon. Counterspell's active. Um, I would say I'm quite far ahead here. Got Counterspell for my opponent's next Haymaker. Always yield to that. Got Counterspell for my opponent's next Haymaker, and then I have either Snapcaster Counterspell or Snapcaster Archmage's Charm to start drawing cards. Ooh. That's annoying. That means I have to, like, answer an Enchantress's presence every turn. Yeah. That's not great for me. Okay. Everything's fine. And that Spreading Seas was fucking clutch. Now, I did have both Spreading Seas and Field of Ruin as um, cards that could get me out of that spot. Oh, nice. That's very good as well. Oh, wow. They're just not going to play it. I think I'll Snapcaster Opt so that I can start attacking my opponent. Less good than Snapcaster Mage, uh, Archmage's Charm, but, you know, clock's, clock's ticking. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take yet another counter spell to back up my stuff. Ooh! And then get my beats on. Drop to Fairy. Plus to Fairy. Go to the end step. Untap these two. And then I'll get a counter spell on my opponent's Enchantress effect this turn if they go for it, followed by an opt. Undo. Okay, yeah. I, my opponent recognizes that I've, I've got things very much under control now. I think that's a good concession. Okay. Uh, now, luckily, I do have a bunch of things that just straight up ent destroy enchantments. That's good for me. So I'll probably want these in EE. Um, Dovin's Veto is probably okay as well. Now, Spreading Seas does specifically stop the Hall of Heliod's generosity, which is, I think, just a one of. I don't think Sarah Sanctum is modern legal. I should check that real quick, because that's really important knowledge. No, that was not one of the pieces that got, um, reprinted in Modern Masters 2. Modern Horizons 2. I think I can go ahead and junk these. Supreme Verdict is also kind of weird. Do they have Argothian Enchantress? I think that one did get reprinted. And if that did get reprinted, I probably want some number. Okay, so that's not legal in Modern. So I don't need to worry about Shroud creatures. So I can drop some number of Supreme Verdicts. I'll probably still keep a couple around as a way to just clean up, um, you know, Bithys and uh, Destiny Spinner and whatnot. God, I don't know which pieces of the Legacy Enchantress deck are actually modern legal. Destiny Spinner is a thing, right? That was that was just a standard set? Question mark, question mark, question mark? Yeah, that was Jumpstart. Okay. And Theros Beyond Death as well. Okay. Yeah, let's... Let's call this good. I'll keep a Supreme Verdict. Yep, the sand is fine. My opponent took one mulligan here. Yeah, that's fine. So, like, this doesn't ramp. It's when those cards ramp and I'm facing, like, an Enchantress's presence on turn two that those sorts of things are more spooky. And I have to think about, like, how I want to fetch in regards to a potential Blood Moon. So, like, normally my heuristic here when I'm not playing around a Blood Moon effect is just, like, fetch a tapped Triome. But here I think I want to leave myself with my first two things being basic lands. Yep, so I will just go ahead and pass with a counterspell available. See what my opponent's working with. Okay, it is a Blood Moon. So I can choose whether or not I actually do counter this. I think I do. because I have like a triple pipped cryptic command in my hand. But I think I will fetch in a way that makes a second Blood Moon not devastating. I'm just going to grab double basic here and counterspell this. If my opponent kept this hand on the strength of the Blood Moon, hoping to just, like, mize a win, that's not going to work. 
All right, um, let's just go Flooded Strand Pass here. Then if my opponent has another Blood Moon, I will have access to both of my colors, and I can just let the Blood Moon resolve. A Sithis is fine. I will Path to Exile that. All right, so let's fetch the basic planes. Go ahead and Path this. And then I'll... Sh oh, no, I won't shock myself with Hollowed Fountain. This is just another basic land. And then future Blood Moons are basically dead. Yeah, I like that. And then I either have Cryptic Command or Snapcaster or Counterspell available this turn. Probably Snapcaster Counterspell, just so I can get my beats on. Yeah, let's go ahead and Snapcaster Counterspell that. Counterspell. And goodbye to you, Sithis. Okay. Um, how do I feel about that card? Apparently not that big of a deal. Just gonna be a Triome turn, I think. I don't want to just, like, blow up a Sterling Grove. I don't think that makes a lot of sense right now. I'm going to finish this game pretty quickly with Hall of the Storm Giants in a couple of turns. Uh, this card doesn't actually really do anything. It's Shroudy. I don't think I care. One, two, three, four, five. Play this tapped, then play this, start getting attacks on. Um, yeah, I don't care about that. Let's send in the Snapcaster Mage. Opponent's down to 16. Play this and pass the turn. At some point, I have, like, the ability to play this uh, EE on 2 and clean up the board a little bit, but I don't think I need to right now. I don't need to. I don't, I don't think I'm going to take action. The next question is, like, do I just start swinging with my land, or do I continue to play it safe and just attack for 2 a turn? If I drop my counterspell mana... My opponent can tutor for an Enchantress effect and put it into play. I would not like that. Yeah, I, th I think I'll just continue to show patience. Go ahead and get in there. Activating the hall just like means that Sanctum Weaver gets to chump block for a billion damage anyway. Um, so I don't super love that. I will convert Field of Ruin into a different land now. Um, I believe it's correct to destroy Stomping Grounds, but... Um, selfishly, to make it easier to cast my spells, I'm destroying Yavamaya. I don't like clicking through all those things. Okay, um, that's pretty good. Yep, let's just keep sending in Snapcaster Mage. I, I just feel very safe currently. I do not like this. So I can blow up Sterling Grove, and then Path to Exile Destiny Spinner rather than counter this. I think I'm good with that. Alright, so let's see what my opponent searches up. Choke. Okay, so I need a cryptic command for that later. That's that's fine. I can also EE for two and kill both of these if I want, rather than use the Path to Exile. Yeah, I am, I am fine with taking a Lightning Bolt worth of damage here. One, two, three, four, five, six. This taps. Okay, so I can't attack and hold up counterspell. Um, so I will just hold up two different things and continue to beat for two. Let's counter draw. Okay, and my opponent concedes, and I still had another counterspell in the hole. Uh, okay, so we're up to three and one. This league is going really well. Okay, uh, we've gotten paired against a Yorian deck in the final round. Uh, my hand is kind of medium minus. I have a blue land, and I have the ability to opt on turn two. Um, but, like, I have all these double or triple pip cards. I don't think this hand actually works out most of the time. I think I'm going to go ahead and mulligan. I like this hand much better. I'll probably throw back the Field of Ruin here. Okay, this one enters untapped, unless I control more lands, right? Yeah. All right, so let's just play that. I'll opt at the end of my opponent's turn once I have an idea of what I'm looking for. Okay, uh, maybe some sort of white weenie or token-based strategy then. Um, whatever my opponent is doing, this Supreme Verdict is probably good against them, and I'll totally keep this counter spell. Oh, Jace is a good pickup. All right, I, I like where I'm at. Okay, do I want to actually counter this, or do I just want to sweep this up as the Supreme Verdict later? I think I just want to sweep that up with Supreme Verdict later. Oh, my opponent kept kind of a sketchy hand, huh? Alright, uh, so do I want to draw two this turn? 
Do I want to take that giver? Do I want to work towards potentially being able to Supreme Verdict later? I think I probably want to draw two this turn. Work towards finding the second white land. Okay. I could counter this. I could steal this. My opponent's stuck on mana, so I should use a card to answer it. I think I want to draw two with this. I think I'm just going to counterspell that. And I'll take one from the giver here. That's not a big deal. Since my opponent's stuck on lands, I'm just going to play a Jace onto this relatively empty board. Yeah, I'll, I'll just, like, Jace brainstorm. Try to find my next white land to Supreme Verdict once my opponent, at least in theory, plays out more creatures. All right. Brainstorm. Yep, okay, this stuff is all great. Um, I don't think I need to hide any of my stuff, um, but just in case I'm wrong, I'm going to hide the Supreme Verdict on top of my library. Okay, yeah, sure, you can you can have that Aether Vial. Although, honestly, I will probably just take it. Because my opponent is... Like, my opponent kept a one lander and is getting very punished for it. We could also just Prismatic Ending it away. And then hold up, like, Archmage's Charm. Yeah, let's just Prismatic Ending that away. Um, Jace Brainstorm again. I'll just Brainstorm again, and then I'll plus next turn. Alright, I'll put back the Triome... All these cards are pretty good. I don't need to get rid of this yet. I can get rid of that later if I want to. I'll fetch now, just in respect of even mind sensor type cards. Guess I'll pick up the triumph that I just put back. Junk the vial. And then I'll leave up a draw two or a counter spell. Yeah, sure. And sweep both of those up in on in a supreme verdict. And then have Snapcaster Supreme Verdict later. The other thing I could do is steal this and... Oh no, that doesn't kill the Giver in combat. It's not Mom. Yeah, I'll just take that damage. Right, Chase goes to one. I'll draw two. Okay. Oh, uh, this is gross. Can Jace Brainstorm try to hit a land? And as long as I hit a land, I can Supreme Verdict and take them off of white mana. I'm good with that. Okay, I did hit a land. Put back two cards. Let's clear the board. You no longer have white mana. Uh, and, and life's good. Okay. Alright, that's a little annoying. Um, but I can answer that any number of different ways. Okay, um, let's just go ahead and Jace Brainstorm. If I naturally draw his Prismatic Ending. Not naturally draw one. Well, let's just put back these ops, I guess. Call an island. I'm gonna fetch these away. I think I'm fine with fetching these away. Mapcaster, prismatic ending, spreading seas. Junk the stone forge here. Uh, let's not redraw opt. So tap hollowed fountain. Spreading seas this land. Yeah, I'm in good shape. Okay, my opponent has finally given it in. That was that was not a keep on my opponent's side. Like, they kept a one-lander with a giver of runes. Like, no. Keep hands that have lands. Uh, yeah, so I don't know entirely what's up over there. Like, my opponent is playing some sort of white weenie Stoneforge Mystic deck. Um, you know, maybe there's some Hammer Time elements in there. I don't know for sure. The Hammer Time stuff I've seen usually has Luris, not Yorian. So, Wear Terror doesn't actually destroy Cauldra Complete, uh, which is kind of a big deal. I probably want to play the EE, just another thing that can get rid of Givers. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to actually play Wear Terror or not. It's not good against Cauldra, um, which will be a little bit of a problem card if it gets in play. Uh, but hopefully I stop that. Um, I do, in theory, think Spreading Seas is quite bad in the matchup, even though... Uh, you know, it was devastating. But it was only devastating because my opponent kept a bad hand, to be fair. So I think I'm gonna play an EE, a Dovin's Veto, and then one Wear Terror. The Wear Terror is also just kill Aether Vials if I don't end up stealing them with an Archmage's Charm. I think that's fine. I'm just not super excited about having to fetch up red. Uh yeah, my hand is fine. A little unexciting, but fine. Might be a hand where I end up shocking myself. Sure. 
So I can prismatic ending this. Give them a card. If I do that, I'm not really great at answering a Stoneforge. So I can either let this sit around for a while and get a little damage. Maybe draw some cards, or I can like take myself off of casting a Stoneforge quickly. Or sorry, eliminating a Stoneforge quickly. I think I probably just want to get rid of this. Like, I'm going to cast non-creature spells every single turn. I'm not thrilled about this. But that card's a little bit of pain in the butt for me, and I don't just have a, uh, like a Supreme Verdict safety net to sweep it up later. Yeah. Okay. Alright, um, so let's try to get through this situation here. That's not a path. Bottom that. So I'll play that and opt again. I can do this later. Uh, no, I'll bottom that. All right. Uh, we'll need to find something to. I guess I can arc mages charm the germ. That should work, right? So I arc. I gain control of the germ, and I'll have the equipment that is attached to it. Yeah, that that's fine. Okay. Yeah, this is this is fine. All right, is the Archmage's Charm still my plan? I think so. I have to do it now if it's the plan. I, th I think that's fine. It means I'm not holding up this Dovin's Veto, but I think that's one of uh, those it is what it is situations. All right, your germ is my germ. Okay, Field of Ruins, no big deal. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, I'll take one. Good with that. Ooh. Is nice. I can do some hits with Cauldra and then um, do a Supreme Verdict later on. I can't do it this turn because my lands are going to enter tapped. I will send in my 5-5. Five five. Okay. So I think I'm just holding up Dovin's Veto in this next turn cycle. And then I fetch a basic and probably wipe the board after hitting in for 5 more damage. That seems like my plan. I'll take 3 more here. Going to 8. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's annoying. Uh, specifically because I can't just pay the Supreme Verdict tax by playing this land. I think I have to counter that. Wait, why can't I counter this? What is happening? I've not cast a spell this turn. I have the mana to cast this. Why can't I cast this? Uh, that's super weird. Each player can't cast more than one spell this turn. I haven't cast a spell this turn. There... Okay, uh, I'm going to do some quick Googling. I think one of my cards is bugged. Uh, yeah, I I can't see any reason why I shouldn't be able to cast Dovin's... Oh, shit, this is non-creature spell. Okay, I figured it out. That's why I can't do it. Um, I guess that happens then. All right, re read the card, Phil. Got it. Okay. So this is going to enter tapped. Next turn I can Supreme Verdict. This turn I can Archmage's Charm and draw two. Alright, am I attacking? I probably don't attack. I probably just let my opponent attack me for two in the air and then Supreme Verdict afterwards. Yeah, I think that's my plan. I think holding back this three damage matters a decent amount here. Okay, that's fine. I have plenty of basics in my deck. It might mean that I don't. Okay, that can blink a Stoneforge and be a slight nuisance. Is that worth countering? I have a Prismatic Ending. I think I just let that happen. Okay, that's fine. I control the germ, so these things are going to separate. Oh shit, but it's going to come back with a new germ. Um, my Supreme Verdict's not going to kill that. Ooh, I might have might have just punted that. Shit. Yeah, I think I think I think I needed to counter that. Yeah, I yep, I, I pondered that. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and concede that one. Alright, yeah, I was I was supposed to counter that. Then Supreme Verdict. I'm still not stable. That one was slipping away. Alright, my head was not in the game after like missing Dovin Veto Dovin's Veto's text. Um let's swap that out after seeing that in action. Grab another wear tear. I'm not super thrilled about that card. Okay, I lack white mana here. I also lack red mana here. 
if I draw a white source, this is a pretty good hand, and if I don't, this hand is not great. I have no redraws, I have no counterspells. I think I'm going to mulligan this. This hand is much more consistent. I'm going to keep this. I'm going to throw back one of my four drops, probably. Throw back the Jace. Play a land and pass. You get a Triome with this in all likelihood. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. I will just uh, wear that on my turn. Okay, sure. So let's nuke the vial, not give my opponent a chance to put in something like a giver. And we'll see if I get stoneforged, which is the big thing that I would care about here. Um, I don't get stoneforged, but um, that's kind of a rough turn for me. Yeah, I, uh, I need some help from the top of the deck here. Okay. Yep. Pretty bad spot. Uh, that helps a bit. But, like, my opponent can get something like an end of turn, uncounterable Stoneforge, or, like, put in a Thalia, be able to play around Cryptic Command better, yada, 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 yada. Fuck. Oh, that's so bad for me. I... I want my removal spells to be live later. I need to kill this. I can kill it later in most circumstances. Like, if I can work towards a Supreme Verdict, just taking out everything, that would be really cool. Like, three here. Go to 15. I hope I get to Cryptic something. Okay, that's just Yorian going to hand. Because I only get one spell a turn, I now think I will just go ahead and remove Giver, and hope my opponent doesn't randomly have, like, a Charming Prince. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Uh, this is good, but I don't get to play it this turn because of the Archon. Um, I'm going to play Flooded Strand. And so I stop in my upkeep, I think. Yep. How bad is it? Pretty bad. That's going to slow me down by another turn. I think I'm going to hold up hope that I can counter a spell with this Cryptic Command. And that my opponent is just going to play more things to the board. And that sucks. I'm going to let that happen. I'm not happy about what I'm about to do, though. I think I need to play towards ripping a Supreme Verdict. Which means being able to fetch. It means doing this. And giving my opponent two cards. I couldn't do this in the main phase, or they could have just replayed it. So my opponent gets two cards there. Yeah, that's not the card I'm looking for. Okay. All right, um, that eliminates a lot of my outs. Now I can't Supreme Verdict in this turn cycle. Uh, I can't Teferi either. Okay, now I can Teferi. Uh, three, four, five, six, seven damage. I am one liner tapped. Yeah. No. Oh. I think I'm just gonna plus on this and hope for the best. All right, so my Triome comes back and untap two lands. I can't cast this opt now to play around the Esper Sentinel tax. That's uh, it's pretty frustrating. Still think I'm on Supreme Verdict or bust. And the fact that my opponent has like seven cards in hand, soon to be eight, and one of those is Yorian. Um, there's there's a lot of bad things going on here. Is what I'm getting at. Okay, that's fine. Uh, well, they have an Arbiter. It's slightly less fine than I give it credit for. Look at that damage to Fairy. I honestly don't know that like even Supreme Verdict gets me out of this box. My opponent just has seven cards in hand. Okay. I'm down to seven. Uh, which is, you know, theoretically lethal next turn. Yep. Now my opponent should wait until my turn. And then, like, ghost quarter me. I can't really cast this opt. If I cast this opt, I get knocked off my triome, and then I can't verdict, so I just have to go to my turn. Yeah. But I don't have a second basic planes, do I? I do not. I have one planes. I, I think I'm out of outs here. Uh, I, guess, I guess I use this, give my opponent two cards, and then see if I can get myself out of this somehow. I don't think I can. Bottom that. I don't think the path is going to be good enough. Yeah. Alright, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and throw in the towel. Like, I can technically path this and 
take non-lethal damage this turn, um, but the damage will be done at this point. Uh, okay, overall thoughts on the list. Pretty good. Uh, we lost to Death and Taxes in the last round there, which is not overly surprising. Uh, Death and Taxes is often pretty good against, like, um, slower blue decks if they get on board early and get to lock them out, and Cauldra provides a whole bunch of pressure. Um, I think I I potentially could have won the, the previous game there. Uh, not the last one, but the previous one, uh, if I had sequenced a little bit better. Um, but my, my opponent didn't do what I was expecting them to do. Uh, I, I was in Legacy Heuristics, and uh, they were in Just Get Me Dead Heuristics. Um, but the deck felt pretty good as a whole. Um, I understand why the Spreading Seas are in the main deck. They were pretty good against Urzas, and they had a little bit of utility elsewhere as well. Um, I don't think I'd mess with the main deck too much. There were a couple of times where I wanted a second Basic Planes, but it's probably not right to have it just because you have things like Archmage's Charm. You really, really, really don't want to... Uh, Yes, being able to cast this on curve. On that note, I might consider going down one field of Bruin. The, it's like kind of the land that you want, uh, but again, like given how pip intensive this deck is, I want to have really smooth mana. I, I would probably try playing two field of Ruin. Uh, as far as the sideboard goes, I don't know how good Blossoming Calm is. Um, there might be enough burn in this format, though, that something like this is just totally legit, and this might have uh, some utility versus combo elsewhere. I wonder if Olamog the Infinite Gyre should be Olamog the Ceaseless Hunger, though. It's slightly more castable, and I believe it still has the same shuffle effect. Um, that would be another small change that I'd be looking to make. I also don't know how good Aether Gust actually is. This card feels a little bit narrow. Uh, but yeah, I, I like this deck list. It, it felt good. It feels like this would be something that I'd be comfortable taking to a larger event. Anyway, folks, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, click the like button. It's one of the easiest ways to support me. If you're new here, consider subscribing for Legacy Modern and Vintage content five days a week. I do want to give you a heads up. I am going to be taking uh, Monday off. That is Labor Day. Uh, if you really want some more Phil content, uh, there are a handful of member exclusive videos you can have if uh, you have, uh, you know, thrown your YouTube of money this way. Otherwise, I will be back on Tuesday for some more nonsense. Have a great rest of the day.